The bipartisan group of senators called the Gang of Eight hope to introduce a comprehensive immigration reform bill by Friday. Meanwhile, in San Diego, the city council unanimously passed a resolution in support of immigration reform. Joining me with more on the local impact of the reform is Pedro Rios, director of American Friends Service Committee, and Ted Hilton, founder of Taxpayer Revolution. Thank you both for being here. Pedro, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are referring to this as a sweeping reform. Give us some of the highlights that we, we could expect to see in this bill. Yeah, so we're hoping that uh, it will include a pathway to citizenship. That's the biggest piece of the bill that will probably be seen on both sides of, the, of Congress. And we will also see uh, language specific to the border, which will address port of entry issues, how to reduce the time, how to make the port infrastructure much more efficient. And we're hoping that there will also be language in terms of holding agents accountable for um, uh, actions that perhaps uh, should be uh, investigated. I know there is some uh, border security uh, issues addressed in the bill. Ted, Republican Senator John McCain is one of the so-called gang of eight, and he's working on this bill. And what he said is there's going to be a lot of unhappy people because nobody got, or I should say everybody, didn't get exactly what they wanted. What would you like to see come out of this bill? I think they need to move to a piecemeal approach and take it on a case-by-case -case basis. So, for instance, uh, different subjects. E verify by itself, um, mm -hmm. reform the 1965 legislation, the family reunification, if there are high tech workers. I think that's how they should do the whole bill. And I think they're going to be in the same problem that they were in 2007, where they could not come to terms to pass that. Because bill. it's too big a sweeping, that's you right. think it could be tackled in that's little right. bits and pieces. Um, Pedro, you were at the city council meeting yesterday when they did this sort of ceremonial resolution to s show support of immigration reform. Newest estimates uh, show there are t nearly 200,000 immigrants in San Diego County. If this reform goes through as is, rather than the piecemeal, what kind of changes could we see here? We probably will see much more participation from community members who will feel supported. And that's why the importance of a resolution to provide support from the city to say, we acknowledge that you are here in our communities, you're contributing. And so why not uh, pass a resolution that ensures that they are able then to contribute in different ways openly. So we're hoping that they would then uh, are able then to acquire the documentation they need to adjust their status whenever those rules are, are uh, acknowledged and publicized. So maybe being a little bit more visible. But when it comes to visibility, Ted, it's estimated that half of the million agricultural workers, right. so about a half million in the U.S., right. are in the country illegally. Right. And there is a guest worker portion of this bill yes. that is talking about giving about um, 200,000 of these workers right. um, work visas. What right. do you think about that? Totally opposed to it. I think we just have not utilized our own people. We have prisoners who could be doing this, juvenile offenders. We have welfare recipients that could be doing this. I think the Department of Social Services needs to become an employment agency. You know, we just can't have four and a half million people across the United States saying they cannot find jobs. Those have to be channeled into any type of work. Just to pay a little bit of devil's advocate, let's say that happens. Let's say uh, the immigrants uh, that are here say, okay, fine, we're not going to work, uh, do the field work, and we're going to have these other people do it. What happens to the immigrants that are here? Well, they're going to have to voluntarily leave if they don't have any work. So that's why you have E-Verify. So you, you make sure that you have a legal workforce, and then they're just going to have to voluntarily leave. Mm -hmm. if, I know there's a lot to that that's underneath that and, yeah. and who left and, and who didn't back in the day. Um, right. But uh, I know the Republicans say that's not really practical. Do you think it would really happen? If you enforce, if you require Americans to do these types of jobs, it will become the situation. They just won't be able to, to continue here. That's it. Okay. Now, a similar immigration reform movement back in 2007, as you right. mentioned, um, didn't pass. Why do you think this one will pass? I think that the conditions are there for it. We are now seeing um, politicians who in the past were opposed to a pathway to citizenship who are now in favor of one. Uh, there's much more uh, dialogue and discussions taking place with communities. There are proposals that are being offered from communities that politicians are looking into. So I think that the, um, all the conditions are set for it. And if we don't pass one now, we're going to find ourselves in, in much bigger problems in, in the near future. And how about you, Ted? Why do you think this one will or will not pass? As I said, the comprehensive approach probably will not work in the conference committee. They will not come to terms and 
I think that's when they're going to realize that they're finally going to have to do this on a piecemeal approach. Okay, Absolutely. well, we have a lot more information on our website, kpbs.org. Thank you both for talking with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.